Hey, Mike, these people that want to defund the police, they get to opt out of service from the police, too. So you opt out, somebody breaking into your house, you can't call the police. Well, yeah, but if there aren't any police to call, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Here's the letter from Black Lives Matter, apparently. The time has come to defund the police. Now, this is a letter that actresses Natalie Portman, Taraji P. Henson, singer John Legend, there's a number of them who have apparently signed this letter. Derek, why don't you send me the information as to who the celebrities are who signed the letter? I think people would find that interesting. Let's find out who signed it. But this is the open letter. Black people are dying of police terror and COVID-19. It's time to defund the police now. Talk, they talk about COVID. They're concerned about COVID. I don't know if you're concerned about COVID, what you're doing out shoulder to shoulder, screeching and screaming at police officers if you're worried about COVID. But they point out black people are suffering disproportionately from COVID-19, four times more likely to die than their white neighbors. And of course, um, they fault the U.S. healthcare system. We don't have a national healthcare system. Instead, we have the largest military budget in the world, some of the most well-funded and militarized police departments in the world, too. The time has come to defund the police, the letter says. Black communities are living in persistent fear of being killed by state authorities like police, immigration agents, or even white vigilantes who are emboldened by state actors. State and local governments spend $60 billion on police and corrections. Despite continued profiling, harassment, terror, and killing of black communities, local and federal decision makers continue to invest in the police, which leaves black people vulnerable and our communities no safer. Where could that money go, they ask? It could go towards building healthy communities, to the health of our elders and children, to neighborhood infrastructure, to education, to child care, to support a vibrant black future. The possibilities are endless. We call for defunding of police and for those dollars to be rerouted to create a public national health care system. All right, so does that mean eliminating the police agencies and officers altogether, just holding it where it is now? I, I, I really, I don't even know where to begin. We'll start with Robert. Robert, what do you think they're asking for when they demand defunding the police the, the police in America? What does that mean? Uh, oh, the, the guilt trip that they give the police is absolutely absurd. We need police. I mean, we need housing. We need all this infrastructure. We need a, you know, a dynamo tax code that's not you know, ripped off and, and over cronied out. We need 10-year plans. We need a lot of stuff. We need to, you know, different you know, these taxes, the tax money. We need transparency there, but we do not need looting and rioting. Where was Obama right at the first day to say he could have used his little coin phrase, "Everybody, all just chill now." They would have listened to him, but he didn't get there and didn't help. Didn't help at all because he's been doing the politics too, trying to pigeonhole Trump and put, make everyone crazy. We're all scared. We are literally terrified. This is a terror tactic by the Democrat Party. They've terrorized this nation with their political garbage because they've, they've actually used God's name in vain and all sorts of horrible things. By their, their, uh, they're doing evil in the name. You know, they act sanctimonious like they're on the side of the good. But well, I, I, there's a lot of good faith actors. Yesterday, George W. Bush, uh, the former president, wrote a very moving statement um, that expressed the concern about racial tension in America. I kept looking in his statement for the sorrow for the police officers who have been killed. I kept looking for the sorrow of the business owners who lost everything. Do you know that P and I don't think it was there. Um, in fact, it seemed there seemed to be kind of a backhanded slam against police. And I'm, I'm really baffled by that for me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm a 60-year-old white guy who has lived a pretty blessed life. And I'm not able to relate to a, a, what it means to be a 21-year-old. Well, how about Tim Scott? Forget a 21-year-old. How about Senator Tim Scott, a conservative Republican senator from South Carolina who reports that in the first 
year or so that he lived in Washington, D.C. as a United States senator. He said he got pulled over, I think I saw the other night, six times, driving while black. That's a dialogue we ought to have. That's something we need to consider, what it must feel like to get pulled over, ostensibly because of the color of your skin. We should all be able to understand that. We were unified in the death of George Floyd and the horror of that. We were unified in saying what what has to happen so that that doesn't happen again. So a young, scared African-American kid doesn't think that's going to happen to him. Three police officers standing around watching while the other officer grinded his neck into this man's you know body for nine minutes or whatever it was. That's a dialogue worth having. But defunding the police, getting rid of the police, attacking the police. How about this? Uh, how about this article by David Harsani over at uh, National Review? Riots are violence. You know why you got to write a column called "Riots Are Violence"? There are intellectuals like the lady over at the New York Times arguing that looting isn't a bad thing. There are actually people with platforms saying burning down buildings, that's all, that's all right. Nordstrom's in Seattle got looted and vandalized and destroyed, and the, the, the Nordstrom company sent out a statement essentially saying, that's okay, we got insurance, lives are what matter, and we've been terribly unfair to black people, so I guess tear our building down. We're, we're in upside downville, and I get having to pander because you don't want more looting. Did you see the video of the, the young men in the apartment in New York giving a thumbs up to the people marching down the streets, and they started throwing stuff through the windows? What a video. I'll tell you about that and more coming up. Don't go away.